Let's check in live with our own M.A. Roscoe. Oh, and Legos, M.A. Oh, these are just Eddie Legos. These are a very, very intricate Moonbots Legos. We're with the team in Woodbury, Team Just Ducky, that is competing internationally. They are finalists in the Moonbots Lego Mindstorms Challenge. This robot is on the moon. Well, in, in your mind's eye, it's on the moon doing some looter challenges. We'll tell you all about it coming up on Fox 9 Morning News. Goes with STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Yeah, Team Just Ducky is a finalist in a worldwide Moonbot Lego Lunar Challenge. Amy Roscoe is live from Woodbury this morning with a demonstration. Pretty cool Legos. Good morning, Amy. This is not your basic set of Legos, you guys, by any stretch. This is the Mindstorm Lego set, which Team Ducky, kind of based here in Woodbury, got. First, they had to do a proposal. This is a very elaborate challenge. And Lars and Mary Rose are showing us some of, I mean, this isn't, you know, I don't know what kind of Legos you had growing up. We didn't have this. But what you have them, what you can do is make a robot or more specifically a moon bot. It's the Google Lunar X Prize Lego Mindstorms Challenge. I'm saying that once and once only because this is what you could do with it. And I am joined by Stefan and Reedy here. Stefan, let Ranger rip, won't you? Uh, because what you have here is a moon bot entirely pre-programmed. And Reedy, what was the idea of the challenge? What did you guys have to do? Um, so basically, there are missions that we have to complete, and they they basically represent things that you actually would do on the moon. So something like the, our robot just picked up helium. So um, on in real life, they would pick up helium for rocket fuel or something like that. And there other things like the orange Lego pieces represent regolith. So that's a challenge they face on the moon. Driving on that is kind of hard. So this entire tabletop represents a lunar landscape. Yep. And you had to feel free to jump up there, Stefan, if, if you missed the peak of eternal light. <laughs> is, that what, is that what that is back in the yep. corner? Peak of eternal light. <laughs> So basically, we, we have to stay there for five seconds for 30 points. And that um, real rovers on the moon would stay there to power up using solar panels. So <laughs> this is using all of your, your science, your technology, engineering, and math, but not in a theoretical way. You guys actually got together hands-on, built this, and programmed your moon bot. Yep, that's something that's cool about this program because we don't get to do this at school. So um, we really enjoy this. And also, when we get a job, this is something that would look really good on an application. <laughs> or <laughs> well, look, I don't know about your app. It looks really good on well, TV and your application. Yep. <laughs> Hopefully. So, so Stefan, what was one of the toughest parts of programming this? Um, probably just getting the robot to work consistently every time. I mean, it's obviously not going to work every time because it's just a toy. So just trying to get it to work almost every time is probably the hardest part. Well, this wasn't the only part. Uh, is, is, is Ranger resting right now? Yeah, th <laughs> this was the goal to get back to basic. Oh, okay. Oh, mission completed. Yes. Mission completed <laughs> in just that amount of time. Well, this wasn't the only part of the challenge. You had to do some outreach as well. And again, that is so important with school gearing back up, the getting kids interested in science, technology, engineering, and math. We'll see how these kids did it when we come back. Ah, oh, pretty Good. darn cool. Yeah. Thank you, M.A.